Arctic Beach Arch of Scotland continuing, that's in uh, Thornwood, just along the road from here. And we've come here today to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we look around ourselves today, the world is running about preparing for Christmas. Many people don't know what Christmas is really all about. It's turned into a celebration whereby people gather together in families and that's a great thing. And they come together to be warm and comfortable together, to share a meal, and to think good things. And that's all good. But sometimes, the reason why there is a Christmas at all is forgotten. And the reason that we are celebrating this time of the year is forgotten. The fact of the matter is that Christmas time is the most important time of the year because we remember that the Lord Jesus Christ came to earth. We might ask the question, why did the Lord Jesus Christ come to earth? And the answer to that question is because of sin. Jesus Christ came in order to save sinners. Sinners like me. Sinners like you. That was his purpose. Why he came here. And today, we want to share with you this good news. That Jesus came in order to save sinners. You say to yourself perhaps, well I don't feel as if I am a sinner. But you know when we subject ourselves to the law of God, the fact of the matter is that under the glaring light of his law, we can easily see that in fact we are sinners. If I was to pose one or two questions to you today as I uh, consider the law of God, the questions might run like this. Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever told a lie? And what do we call people who lie? They are liars, are they not? And so you have broken one of the laws of God. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Again, when we consider law father we consider what he says about taking things that do not belong to you have you ever taken anything that did not belong to you and what do we call that that's theft so so far we've got two laws which we've broken without even thinking about it another question we might ask ourselves is have we ever looked upon a person with lust. And the Lord Jesus Christ says that if you look upon a woman when speaking to man, when you look upon a woman with lust, you have already committed adultery with her. That is how far-reaching and how serious his law is. I was talking to my optician yesterday considered himself to be a good man and really he is a good man. He doesn't do anyone any harm, in fact he does a lot of good. But when I spoke to him about, about the things of eternity and about the law and about the Lord Jesus Christ, then he told me that he had a faith of his own. He had, as it were, invented his own faith believed in something, but he didn't know what it was. But the Bible actually says in the very first commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And isn't it the case that we very often create a god of our own imagining? We make a god which configures to our own sense of justice or injustice. But actually the God of the Bible makes it crystal clear who he is. He is a God of utter righteousness. 
he is a God who cannot even look upon iniquity. So holy are his eyes. And today we want to just share with you these truths that when we allow ourselves to be subjected to the scrutiny of God in his world, then as a matter of fact we fall far short of all of his moral requirements. This is the, the truth which the law of God subjects us to. And you know, if we admit for a moment that we are sinful, then we have to realize that we cannot be with God in heaven, in eternity. That would be impossible. We would have no right to be with God in heaven. God cannot acquit the unrighteous. And so, we want to pass this message on to you today that in your sin, it is impossible for you to be made right with God. Some people think that you, on dying, are automatically saved. That is not the case. The Bible makes it crystal clear that unless we have a, a way of dealing with sin, then it is impossible to dwell with God in eternity. And the wonderful thing about the Gospel is that He has provided a way whereby we can be made right with God. I hope I can make this message clear today that God Himself has provided a means whereby we may be made right with God. And what is that means? What is the means whereby we can be justified with God? Well, in the fullness of time and in accordance with His eternal will, he sent His Son, Jesus, who right now we celebrate as being born in a manger, the lowliest of places. He had a, he had a, a, a stable to be born in, and He lay in a manger where cattle ate, they ate the, the uh, corn and so on, and that was His cradle. The Lord God, the Son, came to earth and was laid in a manger. That is the Christmas story. But the Lord God who came to earth as a little baby grew into manhood and was approved by man. And as he grew, he was comely and able to speak to people in the most wonderful terms of love. And he invited people with these words, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For only Jesus can give you rest, dear friends, from your sin. I heard uh, an interesting thing the other day, that this little country of ours, which has 5.3 million people in it, do you know that 900,000 people are being treated today for depression? I wonder why that is. Could it be that their lives are spiritually empty? But I return to this Lord Jesus Christ. Who is He? He is the eternally begotten Son of God. And when He came down to this earth, He took our flesh, your flesh and mine, just the same. And so there are two natures dwelling within the Lord Jesus Christ, the divine and the human. There is no other way in which God could be so associated with us. For God is spirit, and He is absolutely pure, and He is absolutely true. And so these two natures were in Christ. And as he went about doing miracles and doing good, so people realized that there was something really special about this one. He 
is the only one in the universe who can give your sin, forgive your sin. And in order to do that, dear friends, he had to go to the cross of Calvary. And when he went to the cross of Calvary, he took your sin, your sin, and my sin. And he nailed it to the tree of Calvary. So that God is able today to forgive you on the basis of what Christ has done. It is a finished work because Christ said from the cross, it is finished. The work of salvation is finished once and for all with one sacrifice. The Lord Jesus Christ died in order to take your sin, your sin upon his shoulders. Is that not wonderful news that today by simple faith believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work that you are able to be justified with God and made right with him. Dear friends, you do not may be made right with God by simply dying. That's a fallacy. You have to come to Christ in faith and you have to believe on him. But you can only do that by coming by the way of repentance. Repentance of your sin. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness and he came out of the wilderness, his gospel was this, repent and believe the gospel. Repent of your sin and believe that Jesus is Lord. He is God the Son and only Jesus, only Jesus, uniquely Jesus can pay the price of your sin and mine. Oh, that you might have ears today to hear this gospel news, for today is the only day you can be sure of, dear ones. You do not know what lies ahead of you tonight, or tomorrow, or all the tomorrows to come. You do not know when the moment will come when death snatches you away, and you will stand before Almighty God, who will judge you. Oh, do not rely on your own good works this day. Do not rely on what you have done, on all the good things you think you have done, like a balance sheet that you come to God and say, well, I think I've done okay, God. I think I've worked my way into heaven. That won't do. That really will not do because he is, he is a holy God, a righteous God, and only only the merits of Christ can gain you entry into heaven. I pray just now that the Holy Spirit might go upon you in this place and that you might hear these words being spoken to you for they are gospel words and they can change your life. I don't know what kind of life you have or how you're living. But so many today are disillusioned. They walk past this free offer of the gospel, which is given by grace. Grace, dear friends, is free and unmerited favor. You cannot work for it. And as you plod through this life, bewildered and sometimes outcast and lonely, then I offer you today in the name of Jesus Christ, this wonderful gospel that you can come to him freely get down on your knees today and ask forgiveness for your sin and receive the free gift of salvation you know the Lord Jesus said about himself I am the way I am the truth and I am the life no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Can you imagine anyone in the history of humankind ever saying such words as these? I am the way, says Jesus. I am the truth, says Jesus. And I am the life. What did he mean by I am the way? Well, he was saying to each and every one of us, only by me 
can you gain access to God? He says, I am the way. He says, He says, broad is the way and wide is the, wide is the way which leads to destruction. And many there be that find it. But narrow is the way that leads unto life. And few there be that enter in that way. And so this day, I say unto you that there is a, an urgency about this message. Dear ones, we do not know when we will be called to give account of our lives. Dear ones, Jesus also said, I am the truth. In a world today which questions truth, all around us nobody has an answer to what is truth. And you will be sold every kind of lie and you believe it. But dear ones, today there is only one absolute truth, and that is the truth which is proclaimed by the Lord Jesus Christ, for He is truth. The Bible also says that the Word of God is truth, and in this Word, the Bible, the Holy Bible, which this country used to revere and to live its life by and now has deserted, this truth can tell you all that you need to be saved. This truth is absolute. This truth will give you absolutes whereby you are able to lead your life. And the only way is, as I say, by the Lord Jesus Christ and believing in Him. Oh, that the Holy Spirit today might come upon you and that you might hear this word, for it is a powerful word proclaimed unto you this day. As you walk past, are you heedless and mindless of this good gospel word? Jesus also says, I am the light. I am the light. Can you imagine anyone in history saying, I am the life? It would be absurd. If I said I was the life, you would say you're an idiot. You'd probably say I'm an idiot anyway. I don't really care. I'm happy today to come and be a fool for Christ in order that some might hear the gospel in passing and that they may turn to God in repentance and faith. I pray today that you might receive the gift of faith and that you might have ears which are open to hear. The Bible says today if you hear his voice do not harden your hearts. Dear ones, do not harden your hearts. It's so easy to harden your hearts and ignore the good word of the gospel. The gospel is truth, for it is proclaimed by God. And this is his means whereby he can tell you about salvation. Salvation in this book from Genesis to Revelation is declared and it is all about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who has come to die instead of you. To die instead of you, dear one. Oh, that you might hear this. There is a substitute so that you in the, in the great courtroom wherein you stand before Almighty God, you will not be found guilty if you are covered in the righteousness of Christ. I pray that you might be able to hear this day this gospel news. Jesus has also said, I am the bread of life. So many people today are going through this world and they are hungry and they are thirsty and they are searching and they feel outcast and unimportant. But I tell you today on the word of this word here, which is the word of God, that God does not consider you to be unimportant. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to salvation in Jesus Christ. All oh, that you might hear. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Jesus is able to feed you, dear one, and he will slake the very thirst of your soul that you might no longer thirst. Many of you are perhaps suffering pain at this time of year, as you remember Christmas has passed. Happier times. 
Maybe you have lost someone who is very dear to you. And Jesus says, come unto me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus can comfort you. In all your pain and misery, the Lord Jesus Christ is able today to take all that away, dear ones. Oh, do not rush on. Pass her by, listen to this word today, this gospel news. Gospel means good news. It means good news, and this is good news today, that Jesus, who also said, I am the light of the world. The beginning of gospel, the gospel of John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the Word was God. And when Jesus came into the world, dear ones, He came in as the light of the world. Do you doubt for one moment that this world dwells in darkness? I heard on the radio the other day there that someone put a three-month-old baby into a tumble dryer. What kind of demon possession is this? I look around me and people are doing all manner of evil things. But Jesus has come as the light of the world. This is not about Santa Claus. This is about God intervening in the most radical way in the world. Yes, Jesus has come in order to seek and to save that which was lost. Dear ones, do not pass by without hearing the word of God this day. For the Lord God, He has made provision for your sin, and if you come today in repentance and faith, then He will surely save you. I have no doubt whatsoever, but don't listen to me. Go home today and read the word of God. Read the Gospel of John and you will see that every word I have spoken this day is nothing but the truth. Thank you all for listening today. Amen. And to God be the glory.